Just some brief uh, reflections on what I recited in the first uh, rak'ah, which is the ending of Surah Al-Furqan. And it is one of the places in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lists the characteristics of the believers. There's around five places in the Qur'an where Allah Azza wa has a list. And this list is about the righteous and the believers. And in Surah Al-Furqan, the ending of Surah Al-Furqan, Allah Azza wa has another such list. It's a beautiful list. And it is a list that every one of us should think about, contemplate, and try our best to achieve uh, all of the characteristics on this list. Allah Azza wa Jal begins this series by saying, وَعِبَادُ Rahman." This is the series of Ibadur Rahman. Ibadur Rahman, those who are the servants of Ar Rahman, those who have Allah has chosen to worship Him, this is their list. You want to be amongst Ibadur Rahman, then this is the list you need to be having in your mind. So the first characteristic, the defining characteristic of Ibadur Rahman, Alladina Yamshuna ala al Ardi Hauna. They have humility as they are walking on this earth. The defining characteristic is a lack of arrogance. They have humility. They are humble. They are not people that are known for their abrasiveness, for their callousness, for their harsh manners. Not at all. The number one defining characteristic of Ibad al-Rahman, الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا This means they are interacting with people. They're not hermits. They haven't cut off from people because of, because of they don't like people or they don't like socialization. No. Ibad al-Rahman have to be active. They have to be involved in society. And as they're involved in society, their akhlaq have to always be the best. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the believer who interacts with other believers and is patient at the negative interactions is better than the believer who cuts off and remains at home. We don't just stay and cut off from society when a bad incident happens, when somebody's rude to us, you know, in our gatherings. No, we have to be involved. But as we're involved, يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا and وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When some person of foolish characteristic confronts them, wants to start an argument, قَالُوا سَلَامًا They don't even get involved in the argument. Subhanallah, how difficult that is. When somebody says something negative about you, somebody slanders you, somebody wants to drag you down to the, to the dust to do something negative, you have to be above that. Not just above that, but say salam, smile and move on. This is the akhlaq. In the short term, the other person might think he's one. In the long term, it is always the people of akhlaq who win. قَالُوا salama. They just move on with dignity. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so by the way, so number one defining characteristic, akhlaq. That's where it begins. Number two is what? Number two is what? Who knows? Have you have memorized these verses? It's very important to understand. Number two, they are the ones praying tahajjud. Subhanallah, the first characteristic, even more important than tahajjud, is how you interact with people. This is a very profound verse here, that more important than your private rituals, by the way, all of them are important. In order to be ibadur rahman you have to have all of these. But the number one, your interaction with others. And so many of us, we consider our private rituals, our ibadat, more important. And Allah begins the list. No, your akhlaq is what really people know you and define you about. Then, of course, you must have rituals. So, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Number two, they're the ones praying to hajjud. They're the ones in the middle of the night. Nobody else is watching them. And they are standing and praying and ruku' and sujood. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا So the second defining characteristic of Ibadur Rahman is private rituals. And the queen of all private rituals is tahajjud. There is no ritual that is more beloved in your private life. And it really demonstrates the righteousness of the person than salat al tahajjud. So, number two is yabitun rabbim sujjad wa qiyamah. They're constantly doing sujood and qiyam in the middle of the night. Number three, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا By the way, there's two du'as in this series of verses. Two du'as only. And it begins with a du'a, this one, and it ends with a du'a. So there is this motif that they're constantly making du'a as well. Even though only two are mentioned. But in this list, the second thing mentioned is a du'a, and the last thing mentioned is a du'a. So there is this this understanding, this intuition that the Ibadur Rahman are constantly making dua to Allah. And the first dua that is mentioned on the list 
is the dua of saving yourself from Jahannam. Now, this dua is not just about the, the, the concept of Jahannam. It's the concept of being conscious that Allah is watching, that you have muhasaba, that there is an akhirah. So when you ask Allah to save you from Jahannam, what does it illustrate? It illustrates your ihsan. Allah is watching you. Your concept of ihsan. So even if Allah Azza, even if you cannot see Allah, Allah is watching you. And you know Allah is watching you. So you are constantly monitoring the concept of muhasaba. I have to answer to Allah. Allah Azza wa is going to call me to account. And so you are cognizant that there is going to be an akhirah. So you make dua to Allah. That israf anna adhaba jahannam inna adhaba hakana gharama inna hasaad mustaqarran wa muqama. Walladheena. So the, the fourth characteristic is when they give charity, not the ones who constantly give charity. No, this is they are giving charity. It is assumed. It is how they give that Allah describes, not the fact that they give. It is an understood that they're giving. This is an interesting play on words here. It's an interesting way of phrasing it. Allah did not say, Ibad rahman are those who constantly give. It's understood they're constantly giving. So Allah describes the quality. Allah describes how they're giving. He doesn't describe the fact that they are giving. When they give, then they give such that it is neither too much or too little. So there's a constant amount that they give. And lam yusrifu wa lam yaqsuru. They're not going to give with israf. They're not going to go bankrupt in sadaqah. This is not the way of the believer and neither are they going to be stingy, right? Rather, they are in the middle of this. So Allah Azza wa says, they're generous in a healthy manner without being in a foolish manner. This is the characteristic of Ibad rahman constantly giving in a way that is suitable for what Allah has given them. They don't just go bankrupt and they leave nothing, no. But they give and they give and they give and they keep for their family as well. So this is another defining characteristic of Ibad rahman Then Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُلُ مَعَ اللَّهِ they don't worship false gods and they don't commit murder uh, unless you know it is qisas or something that you have to for the sake of uh, a proper uh, execution and they don't commit zina now question here why is this coming so late on the list surely murder and yani, uh, uh, murder and shirk and zina these are such major sins why why is it coming in the middle of the list why not in the beginning and the response is that the, the, these characteristics, if Allah mentioned in the beginning, it is not befitting of Ibad rahman Can you imagine? Ibad rahman are those who don't murder. What? Yani everybody doesn't murder. But Allah wants to, us to know, Ibad rahman do not commit any major sins. And three sins are listed to illustrate all major sins. The biggest major sin is shirk. Then the biggest major sin against the creation is murder. Then the biggest major sin in your private life between you and Allah is zina. So these are the three major sins that characterize all of the other major sins. Because major sin, either it is shirk, which is the worst, or it is hurting other people, the worst is murder, or it is in your private life, and the worst is zina. So Allah says, Ibad rahman do not have any major sins. And then whoever has a major sin, yalqa athama. That person, they, they cannot be Ibad rahman They're going to be punished. Major sins, the threat is punishment. But then what if somebody has committed a sin? Is there all hope lost? Nothing can be done? No. Allah says, even those that have done a major sin, you can still become Ibad rahman How so? What is the mechanism? إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيَّاتِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ If you have committed a major sin, then you repent and you renew your iman and you follow up with good deeds, then Allah will take that major sin and substitute it for a good deed. So there is chance to become Ibad rahman no matter what you have done. Even if you have done murder, the verse is saying, if you have truly repented to Allah, turned over a new leaf, committed, your, renewed your iman, and done good deeds after that, then Allah Azza wa Jal will allow you to reach the ranks of Ibad rahman This is one of the most optimistic verses in the Quran. You can become Ibad rahman even if you've done shirk, even if you've done these major sins if you truly repent to Allah not just that but if a true repentance will actually bring about a conversion of the sin into a good deed rather than being punished for drinking alcohol let's say rather than being punished if the drunkard truly repents and makes a complete change with his life and turns over the, a new leaf it is possible that a life of sins will then be rewarded because in fact those sins were used as a catalyst to become ibadur rahman so 
Allah Azza wa Jal allows this opportunity. Even if you've done these sins, you still have the opportunity to be Ibadur Rahman. Then Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ They are not giving false testimonies, right? So their, their uh, tongue is always speaking the truth. They're not giving falsehoods. They're not giving lies in business uh, contracts, in the shahada of the court, when they're interacting with other people. They have integrity. They have honesty. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ This is very similar to what has come in the beginning of the verse. When the foolish confront them, they say salam. This is similar, but it's even more higher than this. When they pass Pass by gatherings of lahu. What are gatherings of lahu? The scholars say anything that is a waste of time, anything that is undignified, they pass by with dignity. So they don't get involved in that which is not their business. They don't get involved in that which will be of no benefit. They don't get involved in, you know, every society and culture, the default is they just waste their time. People just get together and do something of no value. And Ibadur Rahman are not like this. Ibadur Rahman are higher than this. So they pass by such gatherings with dignity. At the same time, yani if nothing haram is happening there, they're not going to become irritated or angry, but they're not going to waste their time over there. So when they go by lahu, they go by with kiram, with dignity. Then Allah says, When they are reminded of Allah's signs, of the Quran, of something they're falling short in, they're not arrogant. They accept the advice and they listen to it. So another characteristic of the believer of Ibadah the Rahman is that they are receptive to nasiha. They're receptive to being corrected. They're receptive to listening to the good. There's an indication here as well that they love to attend circles of knowledge. They want to be amongst the righteous. They want to listen to the Quran and Sunnah. They want to be taught Islam. So to be associated with halaqat of ilm, to be associated with knowledge, to be reminded of Allah and His Messenger, this is of the signs of Ibadur Rahman. And then the final characteristic that is mentioned is the final dua as well. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا they want righteous family, righteous spouse, and they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make their family righteous as well. So a characteristic of Ibadur Rahman is that they're not only interested in themselves, they have to monitor their families as well. They have to take care of their families as well. You cannot be a righteous person and neglect your family. You cannot be Ibadur Rahman and your family has nothing to do with the Ibadah of Ar-Rahman. You have to be involved in their life. Bring the bar up with them. Constantly make dua for them. Want them to be better and good as well. And make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give us of their progeny and of our children that which will be a comfort of our eyes and souls. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. The final thing that is is mentioned and make us an imam for the muttaqin i've talked about this phrase multiple times the meaning of imam here is not the prayer leader the meaning of imam here is role model and we desire to be role models for the believers. We desire to be so pious and so righteous, not for them, but so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us role models for the other righteous. The muttaqin should look at us and say, oh, this is a person who has sabr. This is a person who has iman. This is a person who has ilm. This is a person who is generous. But we do so not for our ego. We do so so that we can get the sadaqah jariyah. We do so so that we rise the highest ranks and we ask Allah, Allah for this we don't ask the people yes we want to be role models and we want to be the imams of the muttaqin but not for our ego we want them we, how else are we going to get to the highest rank how else are we going to be the best of the best by becoming the imams of the muttaqin وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. we want to get that piety and righteousness to leave sadaqah jariyah to cause an impact on people it is not wrong to want to be the best of the best on the contrary that is the essence of iman we want to be be the best of the best but we ask Allah to be the best of the best we don't ask people we don't make that the direct goal it's an indirect goal that ya rab make us so good make us so righteous make us so pious that even the pious consider us to be a leader amongst them this is a dua we're making in tahajjud we're making in the middle of the night that's the dua we're making imama these are all of the characteristics the final one of them you want to be the best of the best if we reach that and if we're able to do that those are the people they will get the ghurfa the ghurfa is the highest place of jannah if you uh, we went over this in my lecture series of jannah the jannah has two broad 
categories, two largely broad categories. The higher category is the ghurfa, and the highest of the ghurfa, the ghuraf, is genital firdaus. So the ghurfa is, you can say, the VIP suites, right? This is the highest level. As in Surah Al Waqi'ah, you have the sabiqun and ashab al yameen, right? The sabiqun, that's the ghurfa, and the ashab al yameen, that's, you know, the average. You go to the, the plane section, you have the economy class, you have the business class, right? So the ghurfa is the the business class. The ghurfa is the, the front row. That's what we want. So, sabaru. Those are the people that are going to get the VIP suites, the ghurfa. So, the ibad rahman are the higher level of the believers. These are the, if you want to say 11, and if you want to say 13, depending on how you subcategorize them. These are the characteristics. I advise myself and all of you to go back to this section, read it on your own with your own translation, understand this list, put it in your mind, and then try your best to implement all of these things, even if you can't do it regularly, at least partially begin this so that insha'Allah ta'ala we can be of the Ibadur Rahman and we can be of those who are the people of the Ghuraf. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمَ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون